For centuries, people have inhabited floating structures meticulously crafted atop water surfaces. Some renowned communities are Nueva Venetia in Colombia, the Uros on Peru's Lake Titicaca, and the Bajolot nomads in Malaysia. Despite the existence of these long-standing floating communities, the prevailing strategy in many nations grappling with rising sea levels is to resist natural forces by constructing barriers to impede the encroaching ocean. For instance, Shanghai and New York have already implemented proactive measures to shield themselves from the looming menace of rising sea levels. Shanghai has encircled 323 miles of its shoreline with defensive sea walls. Similarly, New York City initiated the Dry Line Project, also recognized as the Big U. This seven-mile-long infrastructure barrier in southern Manhattan serves a dual purpose as a high-water barrier and public space, integrating amenities such as parks, seating, bicycle shelters, and skateboard ramps. But a recent change in perspective has prompted some enterprises to cooperate with Mother Nature rather than opposing her. Consequently, the concept of floating cities garnered widespread interest, with numerous countries actively exploring it. Three nations have emerged as pioneers in constructing floating cities from scratch. All three assert that their respective endeavors represent the world's first sustainable floating cities. First on our list is the floating city in South Korea, where the maritime city of Busan is embarking on a groundbreaking venture. Oceanix Busan is a self-sustaining floating city, boldly asserting its natural disaster resilience, primed to endure Category 5 hurricanes and tsunamis. In response to the menace of rising sea levels, South Korea has opted against conventional sea barriers or drainage systems, opting instead for the creation of a floating metropolis capable of accommodating up to 100,000 residents. Originally introduced in 2019 as a UN Habitat-backed initiative, the concept swiftly transitioned from a theoretical notion to a tangible construction plan as the bustling port city of Busan confronted the imminent reality of partial submersion by 2030. With a population of 3.4 million, Busan, in 2021, committed to being the inaugural host city for the prototype, with construction set to commence soon. The city will be situated on a floating platform tethered to the seabed, capable of adjusting its height with changing sea levels. However, concerns arise about the potential submersion of the entire structure due to the weight of the city. To address this, the city's construction will adopt a flexible system, avoiding a single massive rigid platform in favor of interlinking numerous small pieces into a cohesive structure. To implement this innovative approach, the city will be comprised of hexagonal islands, each covering an area of 15 and a half acres. The platforms will be crafted using concrete caissons, essentially empty hulls that double as storage areas. Engineered like vessels, these caissons possess inherent buoyancy, allowing them to float on water. They will be tethered to the ocean floor with sufficient slack, enabling them to rise and fall with fluctuating sea levels while maintaining stability. This design ensures adaptability and resilience to environmental changes. Each platform or neighborhood, as they will be termed, will have a capacity for 300 people and serve a distinct purpose such as housing, entertainment, or research. This project is envisioned as a self-contained ecosystem, where the island can sustain itself with an independent supply of water, food, and energy. Oceanic City aspires to achieve complete self-sustainability, relying on specialized solar panels, wind turbines, and potentially harnessing energy from the ocean using ocean thermal energy conversion. The city will employ a comprehensive water management strategy, collecting rainfall and treating wastewater for reuse in various activities. A communal farming system will empower residents to cultivate their own produce. Each island will allocate up to 32,000 square feet of space for crop cultivation, incorporating five different systems, outdoor gardens, indoor greenhouses, aquaponics, aeroponics, and 3D ocean farming. The floating city will exclusively rely on electric vehicles, hydrofoil taxis, and pedestrian or cyclist traffic utilizing bridges connecting the platforms. 
to minimize the environmental impact of the tethered floating city on the marine ecosystem, an innovative anchoring method called BioRock is employed. This method not only promotes coral reef growth and regeneration, but also functions as an artificial reef, providing food and shelter for marine life. Moreover, the resulting structure exhibits physical properties similar to concrete and securely binds itself to the ocean bedrock, establishing a stable mooring point for the floating platform. This dual-purpose approach integrates ecological sustainability with functional stability in the city's design. Despite this, the claim that Oceanic City is unsinkable poses challenges due to the early stages of proposed technologies and a lack of crucial details such as operational aspects, costs, and funding sources. The next proposed floating city is in the Maldives, where over 80% of its 1,196 coral islands stand less than 3 feet above sea level, marking the lowest terrain of any country worldwide. By 2050, all these islands could become uninhabitable due to rising sea levels. This underscores the pressing need for innovative solutions. Responding to this need, the authorities have officially launched a billion-dollar project to establish a floating city. This visionary initiative envisions 5,000 low-rise floating homes accommodating 20,000 residents, complemented by essential facilities such as a yacht marina, five-star resorts, a hospital, a school, a shopping mall, council and government offices, and small picnic islands. Similar to Ocean Busan, the Maldives' floating city will be constructed on a series of hexagonal floating structures that dynamically adjust to sea levels forming a flexible grid across a 200-hectare lagoon anchored to the bottom of the Indian Ocean near the capital city of Mali. Rooted in the traditional Maldivian seafaring culture, the development is not only designed for sustainability but also prioritizes livability. The city aims to seamlessly blend modern amenities with the natural environment, embodying a harmonious balance between human habitation and ecological preservation. The Maldives' floating city will feature an intricate network of bridges, canals, and docks, seamlessly interconnecting the entire urban expanse. Drawing inspiration from the local coral, the hexagon-shaped segments emulate the distinctive geometry found in coral formations. The modular units, constructed in a local shipyard, will be towed to the city, where they will be attached to underwater concrete foundations secured to the seabed. The buildings on the city's surface will adopt a low-rise design, oriented towards the sea. Shops, homes, and services will line tiny palm-lined streets, creating a harmonious and sustainable living environment that integrates seamlessly with the surrounding natural elements. The Maldives' floating city will also eliminate gas-powered vehicles, offering residents transportation options limited to walking, cycling, boat travel, or electric noise-free buggies and scooters. The city's energy supply is slated to be predominantly sourced from on-site solar power generation, fostering sustainability. Waste management will involve local sewage processing and repurposing it as organic fertilizer for plants. The city will adopt deep water sea cooling as an innovative alternative to conventional air conditioning. This method entails drawing cold water from the sea depths and circulating it into the lagoon, contributing to energy conservation. While the city's aspiration is to achieve self-sufficiency, specific details on how this will be accomplished remain undisclosed to the public. There are also concerns that the project may primarily cater to the affluent rather than addressing the needs of the local community in response to rising sea levels. Nevertheless, the Maldives' floating city has achieved a significant milestone with the successful completion and towing of the first mock-up unit. The anticipation is for the initial residents to move in somewhere in 2024, with the entire city scheduled for completion by 2027. Finally, we have the floating city in the Middle East. Saudi Arabia is embarking on an endeavor to construct a floating city on the Red Sea named Oxagon. This industrial octagon-shaped city, set to be the world's largest floating structure, represents a novel model for future manufacturing centers. It is envisioned to reshape the way humanity lives and works, acting as a catalyst for economic growth and diversity in Neom and the broader kingdom. 
The central hub of the urban environment is concentrated around the integrated port and logistics hub, designed to accommodate the majority of the city's projected residents. A distinctive feature of the metropolis is the division between the parts standing on solid ground and the floating section atop the sea, separated by a waterway boundary. This channel serves as a gateway for massive container ships to access the city's port, which is destined to evolve into a crucial hub in the surrounding area. Oxagon aims to establish the world's first fully integrated port and supply chain ecosystem. The port, logistics, and rail delivery facilities are seamlessly unified, promising world-class productivity levels with net-zero carbon emissions. The city's strategic location, in close proximity to the Suez Canal and an already well-established global trade route facilitating around 133% of all global trade, further enhances its significance. This positioning underscores the potential for Oxagon to become a pivotal player in global trade, leveraging its unique and sustainable infrastructure to contribute to the efficiency and environmental responsibility of the supply chain industry. Oxagon is set to host massive manufacturing facilities that boast significant distinctions, including the world's largest green hydrogen project, the largest and most advanced modular building construction factory, and the largest hyperscale data center in the region. Beyond being an industrial hub, Oxagon is envisioned as a complete metropolis, featuring residential quarters, all of which will be powered by 100% renewable energy. The concept of floating cities indeed presents an intriguing and innovative option for urbanization, blending technological advancements with environmental sustainability. While the idea holds promise, it still requires thorough economic and technical validation to address potential challenges and ensure long-term viability. The success of projects like the Oceanix Busan, Maldives Floating City and Oxagon will likely serve as crucial benchmarks for the feasibility and adaptability of floating city designs on a larger scale. The continued exploration of such solutions is essential in the face of rising sea levels and urban challenges. What are your thoughts on the concept of floating cities? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.